you are not defined by what you look like in any way shape or form me being in a two-month relationship being like i want babies it can be detrimental to the way that girls look at themselves bearing in mind we've been together since we were literally kids i have suffered with anxiety for probably the best part of my life they hide behind a screen they hide behind a keyboard the two-year point in a relationship is like the make or break point hey guys and welcome back to my channel so as you can tell i'm back in the car but i'm actually not going anywhere this video i'm not going to be doing a drive with me but as you can tell from the title i'm going to be doing a q a and i just wanted like a chilled vibe i didn't want to sit in my bedroom because honestly i've been in there all day so i wanted a little bit of a change of scenery so we're back in the car plus i've got to go and pick brad up after i've finished filming this so i just figured it worked quite well together okay so without further ado i'm just gonna get straight on with the questions So I'm going to start off with what skincare products do you use on your skin as your skin looks very clear. I'm going to be totally honest, I am the worst with my skin and I am fully aware that I am very, very lucky to have clear skin. My mum has clear skin, my dad has clear skin. As far as I'm aware, there's not many people in my family at all that suffer from bad skin. But that also means that I'm really lapsed with my skincare. I don't really do anything at all. If I do, and the biggest thing that I would say has helped me if I get like hormonal spots or anything is a facial scrub or one of those like machines with the brush heads on them, like the Vanity Planet ones. Also something I learned the other day is that you shouldn't actually put moisturizer on before you go to bed because you don't realize how much you sweat in your sleep. So if you have moisturiser in your pores and you, then you sweat, that sweat's literally got nowhere to go. So that's what kind of builds up in your face and creates spots, I believe. But basically I just learned to not put moisturiser on before you go to bed, no matter how dry your face feels. So I now don't do that to prevent anything from happening at all. But yeah, I don't really have any skincare products. I'm just very, very lucky and I'm fully aware of that. Someone says, do you do YouTube full time? So yeah, I do YouTube full time. And honestly, that is all thanks to you guys. I obviously couldn't be in the position that I'm in without you guys and I can't thank you enough for it. I'm absolutely living my best life and I urge anyone out there, like anyone who sees this video, if you want to start a YouTube channel or you're considering it and you're too scared or you don't think it could work out, please just try it because I had no idea where this would go and I'm now sitting here with this being my full-time job, getting the most incredible opportunities, like meeting the most amazing people. It's just insane and I feel so grateful every day to wake up and love what I do and be able to bring you guys content and hopefully you love what I'm doing. I'm trying to like bring you guys a little bit of variety at the moment. Like I want to include more lifestyle things because I know I do a lot of hauls and I know that a lot of you guys do follow me for my hauls but I want you guys to get to know me as a person because without sounding big headed I feel like I have a lot to give you in terms of like advice maybe or i don't know i want to do more like what i eat in a days and gym style videos and stuff like that i need to get myself back in the gym i think one of the questions on this actually was are you ever going to do that gym routine and yes i am i've been very lapsed with the gym at the moment yeah i will be doing that and i want to do more like day in the life videos and stuff like that just a massive thanks to all of you anybody that's watching this video because one view helps one like helps one subscribe helps it's just insane that you all support me every single day so thank you thank you thank you thank you so i'm going to go on to this question next because it leads on quite nicely how did you become a full-time youtuber what were the steps you took to get to this point so obviously in the start you have to just take the plunge and go for it to be quite frank and to be quite honest about how i got to the stage that i'm at now obviously being able to do it full time means that you need a following behind you to be frank and you need people to be watching your videos and enjoy your content because ultimately that is what brings in the revenue in a roundabout way like i kind of want to do a full video on this so you guys can just ask me questions on how it kind of works because when I wasn't doing it and I was just watching people I was so interested in how these people were actually making money or how this was their job like I didn't understand it at all but there are so many aspects to it but yeah ultimately obviously you need a following to be able to make it your full-time job to start with the main thing that I did at the start was definitely to follow some trends obviously I just mentioned that a lot of you guys follow me for my hauls and I was fully aware that Pretty Little Thing hauls were doing well and they were being recommended by YouTube to a lot of people so YouTube as a platform 
when you're recommended videos i don't have control over that that's all to do with algorithms but i did get quite lucky in the sense that a lot of my videos were recommended to a lot of people hence why my following grew definitely follow trends if you see someone's video doing quite well do the same type of video obviously don't copy them like for like and obviously if it is a video that they've come up with the idea themselves for sure credit them because credit where credit's due do you know what i mean like i 100 live by that and i think it's so accurate for this platform but obviously in terms of haul videos if there is a brand out there at the moment that a lot of people want to know about then do a video on them and it will get recommended to those people so there are definitely ways of looking at what's kind of hot right now bringing that following over to yourself so that is one massive thing i would say i did mention this in a video i did a while ago but the biggest thing is to monetize various different platforms because although youtube's not all about the money and i know that sounds like that's what i'm kind of talking about but ultimately to make something your full-time job you still need to pay your bills do you know what i mean so yeah if you want it to be your full-time role research and literally google is what i did talk to people just find out ways in which you can monetize various different platforms or monetize your own platform like youtube in various different ways so yeah just through like perseverance and pushing videos out and content out it's kind of the steps that you need to take to be able to make it your full-time role is youtube what you see yourself continuing in the future 100 percent. so a little backstory i know this is far-fetched but please bearing in mind that i've been with brad for six years so this isn't like me being in a two month relationship being like i want babies i personally have always wanted to be self-employed by the time that i have kids regardless as to what it was doing at the time that i was thinking that i probably didn't know what i was going to be doing it in but i just want to be able to like watch my kids grow like every milestone that they hit i want to see it all i don't want to have a baby and then just go back to an office job and i know that i'm so privileged to be in the position that i'm in and trust me i am working on myself to be able to get to that point and i know there are people out there that want nothing more than that and can't necessarily have it so i am fully aware of that but personally it's something that i've always tried to look for things that i can do or go into that would enable me to do that and obviously youtube is a unbelievable position to be in to be at home with your babies and watching them grow but that's kind of how i see it going so yeah 100 percent, i would want to do youtube for as long as i can i know that people have kind of mixed views on it but if i can go through first time parenting and potentially help somebody else that may be feeling the same way as i do or i don't know i have no idea what's to come obviously i'm sitting here with no kids right now i don't have any experience in it so i just want to document my journey and hopefully help others along the way so 100 percent i'm gonna be on youtube for as long as i possibly can be and as long as you guys want to watch me so someone says do you suffer from anxiety and if so what helped you 100 percent, yes um i have suffered with anxiety for probably the best part of my life i would say around 12 years but again this is a topic that i kind of want to do another video on because it's something that i think we all need to talk about more and I've given so much advice to my friends that I want to give to you guys as well because if it even just helps one of you then that would literally make my life like this is one of the reasons that I set up this platform I want to be able to help others and not just show you the clothes that I've bought if you know what I mean obviously I'll keep doing that but I do want to be able to give you guys advice as well whenever you need it but yeah for about 12 years I've definitely suffered with anxiety I kind of like go like this like most people do i suffer really bad and then i'm okay and on top of the world and then it gets the better of me some days but the biggest thing that i find helps me personally is tough love and i know that might be a bit of a weird coping mechanism to some people but i genuinely find ways to shut my brain down by saying somebody in this world is going through so much worse than what you're going through right now especially if the thoughts that are in my head are really like irrational and it's like fully my anxiety speaking and it's not actually a real situation i've worked on myself and worked on my thoughts in a way that i'm like you need to stop thinking about this because it's not a real situation there are people out there going through real situations that are so much more harmful than what you're thinking in your head right now and over the time that i've suffered with it i've had outbursts of like being so irrational in situations and being just so ridiculous to be honest in the way that i'm thinking about a certain situation that people have got annoyed with me in the past and if anything it helped me and i now thank them people today because it makes you realize and it honestly is the most useful thing to snap yourself out of it so personally i find that tough love is like the biggest help for me but also one of my instant coping mechanisms is to talk through it so if i'm feeling a certain way or 
I'm nervous about something, the first thing I'll do is pick up the phone and speak to Brad and I'll talk through it and he's such a good listener and he's always there for me. So yeah, I'll just speak to him, speak to whoever I'm with. As long as I feel comfortable, I'll literally just speak through the situation and it makes me understand it more in my head and therefore I can kind of work through it. But I will do a whole video on that. And if you guys have any questions, then hopefully I can cover them in that video. Someone says, how do you move on from a two year relationship when it ended nine months ago? I honestly feel like the two year point in a relationship is like the make or break point. I don't know if everybody else would agree with that, but I feel like it's where a lot of things become a bit rocky. And I mean, I've definitely seen that as a point where things become a bit like, okay, we can either work on this and carry on or this can be it type of thing and I think sometimes it's very one-sided sometimes it's both sides but either way in regards to that question I obviously don't have experience in this but if it was me I would just get out there like I would go and meet new people I would change things in my life like maybe get a new job or something ridiculous like make a massive change in your life because it would make yourself focus on that way more than your relationship it would mean that you'd meet so many new people like in a new work environment you're going to meet so many people because you're working with them every day and just work on yourself like be selfish and just think actually I'm fine doing me right now and do you like go and do everything that you wanted to do that you didn't feel like you could do in a relationship and I don't know I just f I think I'd just fully like go crazy but that is super sad and I hope that one day you find someone that will make you totally forget about your previous relationship someone said if you didn't get paid for YouTube would you still do YouTube I have wanted to do YouTube for the longest time I just never had the courage to do it at all I was too scared about what people would think obviously I don't have that attitude at all anymore you kind of just do what you want and the people that support you support you and the people that don't don't I literally don't have any other outlook on it but yeah when i was younger i wanted to do it so badly and obviously that was at a time when you literally couldn't make a penny from it anyway so if literally tomorrow youtube dropped any way of making money from it i would 100 percent carry on it just obviously wouldn't be to the extent that i'm doing it now because i'd have to get a full-time job on the side i would get home from work even when i did have a full-time job and this that would be my favorite part of the day like creating a video editing it uploading it i loved it so someone's asked have you met any rude youtubers if yes i'm not going to ask their names just wondering how the youtube world treats new youtubers and have you noticed if someone with a bigger following acts differently behind the scenes um <laughs> yeah i think it's like a known fact that there are people out there that aren't what they're like off screen with youtubers you don't find it as much because we literally have to put our personality online like everyone that does youtube goes into it to put themselves out there and that is in video form so therefore you have to talk you have to act yourself and be natural in front of the camera so i think it comes across so much more in videos what we are actually like so therefore you're probably not as surprised when you meet us in person when we're literally the same person that you see on your screen but whereas with like instagram people and bloggers they don't have to put their personality out there at all they hide behind a screen they hide behind a keyboard and therefore i think that is probably why when you meet some of these people they're not the nicest shall we say but obviously you do find it in both realms i'm not just bashing everyone on instagram it doesn't go for everyone at all i've met some absolutely amazing people that just do solely instagram just have a blog but obviously you hear things and you have your own encounters and personally i find that it's more with people like that than it is with youtubers but on the subject of how the youtube world treats new youtubers i honestly think that being new to youtube is like the best time because there are so many other people in your boat like so many people are starting youtube every single day so it's really easy to find people that are at the same point as you and just starting out and have the same kind of questions as you making friends and stuff is so easy and getting to know people online is literally the easiest thing you send them one message and you can be best friends the next day and luckily all the girls that i've spoken to have been exactly the same on and off camera so therefore i already know that i'm going to get along with them someone says when do you think you will be ready to have kids okay so for the longest time like for the whole of my life i've always said 25 i'm now 22 and the thought of having kids in three years literally scares the shit out of me i can't imagine having a baby in three years just based on like how quick the last couple of years have gone, no. <laughs> my mum had my brother when she was 26 and I've always wanted to be around that age. And I don't know, I've always gone for 25, but yeah, we'll have to see because I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> have you ever had any body issues, thought that you were too fat slash too skinny? I think everybody has good and bad days of how they feel about themselves, but I've never had like body issues. Like I've never looked at myself and thought, I hate what I look like in the mirror. And I feel so 
deeply sad for people that do feel like that because in all honesty i think that the biggest culprit is social media especially in this day and age like that's all you hear about of girls comparing themselves to these other girls that they see on social media and the thing that gets me obviously i'm fully aware that instagram sometimes our life looks insane compared to what it may actually be like or sometimes people's bodies may look insane compared to what they actually look like i'm fully aware that there's this fakeness out there with some people and some profiles which is so misleading and is literally so wrong because it can be detrimental to the way that girls look at themselves and that literally breaks my heart i've luckily never been in a position where i've looked at another girl on social media and compared myself to her just because i'm quite comfortable with the way i look and i just accept any flaws that i feel like i have obviously i'm going to be able to find things that i don't necessarily love about myself but i don't let them get me down and i don't worry about it if anything i just dress to flatter those areas i've never let it go any deeper than that it's not necessarily always an accurate representation of what you look like or the way that your life is so i just think like if you're comparing yourself to these people and you know exactly what they're doing then god knows what these poor young girls that are so impressionable are thinking when they look at people's pages which is why i try and like keep my stuff as normal as possible and not represent my life in any other way than what it is and show you guys when i have like normal days and not i mean people rent handbags like can we just talk about this people literally rent cars they rent handbags they rent jewelry you can pay someone to literally borrow like a cartier bracelet and wear it for a picture just because it's what's in right now like that blows my mind and i think it is so wrong so wrong i know i've gone on a complete tangent from this question but i just think sometimes people take it too far and it's not what this platform should be used for and hence why i want to use my little space to try and empower you girls and just say you really do not have to let tiny imperfections that you only see about yourself get you down and make you actually have body issues because no one should have an issue with any of their body parts like at all no one and i know that social media may make you think differently but please don't let it like unfollow those accounts if you find yourself comparing yourself to the girl that you're seeing on instagram every single time you log in unfollow her it will be the best thing you do because you don't need to sit there and start picking holes in yourself just because you've seen what somebody else looks like i honestly love nothing more than seeing these posts from these girls that are like posing in one picture and then they'll be like me 30 seconds later when they're sitting down and they've got rolls in your stomach because everybody has that when they sit down it's my favorite thing when people are just like this is me this is also me same person look different with different posture hence why my instagram looks like this and me day to day probably looks like this same as you do you know what i mean yeah so i've never had body issues and i really really hope that none of you have and if you do, just know that you don't have to and you are not defined by what you look like in any way, shape or form. And you especially should not define yourself by that, let alone other people. Okay, so someone says, sorry if it's a bit personal, but with your job, how do you make time for your relationship? I'm currently speaking to someone and find with our work schedules, it's making things difficult. I want to see where things will go, but it's becoming a task. Any advice? Right now, I would honestly say that me and Brad are at the busiest points of our life that we've ever been. We are constantly in different places. We live together but barely see each other. We sleep in the same bed every night but barely talk. Like it's that kind of mayhem that we're in right now just because we are both like at such a important point of our careers that we are just pushing most of our time and energy onto our careers but we are both on the same page with that and i think that that is the most important thing obviously if one of you is doing that and don't get me wrong obviously we've had times where we've not been on the same page with that and one of us feels that the other's not giving us enough attention or we're just kind of a bit distant but just talk like you really have to talk these things through and as soon as you're both on the same page again you can just work together on it like me and brad have always really tried to be ourselves in our relationship i know that a lot of people get kind of tied into these relationships that really almost like engulf them and make them into a completely different person but we've really grown together as a couple like bearing in mind we've been together since we were literally kids we were 16 years old and luckily we've just grown into the same path in life and we want the same things out of life so we're very lenient and like let each other do whatever we need to do to get ourselves to where we want to be because ultimately that's what's going to make you a happier couple at the end of the day and with us both striving for the same thing it makes it so easy for me to like let him do him whenever he needs to and he lets me do me whenever i need to so i think the biggest thing is communication and as long as you're both on the same page and are working towards an end goal together then that is the biggest thing someone says what tan do you use if you use one so honestly for the longest time i hadn't used tan you guys would always ask me what tan i was wearing and i literally don't wear any i've been quite blessed with like olive skin i don't know where it comes from we literally have like i think i have an eight fire in my blood and that's it and i definitely don't get a tan from 
island <laughs> honestly in my weekly vlog if you've seen it i was sitting next to georgia and misha who had both tanned and i clearly hadn't and i did not realize how good a tan makes you feel it honestly just changes your whole look like i tanned the other day and my dad was like you look so healthy and probably said it about five times it's true like you just look glowing you know when you come back from holiday and you just feel good so yeah i recently got back into it but really luckily a brand deal came along the other day with saint -Tropez. i'm sure some of you guys have seen it on my instagram but that is the tan that i have literally used for years whenever i used to tan when i was younger i would always get saint -Tropez. so i was honestly baffed when that campaign came in i was like this is perfect timing i've just got back into fake tan and now you're offering to send me some tannin products so saint -Tropez has always been my go-to and yeah luckily that collaboration just came in right at the right time the only one that i use is their classic tanning mousse i think it's called or bronzing mousse i way prefer like a mousse that develops overnight so i like apply it and then i sleep in it and wash it off the next day and it literally lasts for like a week yeah saint -Tropez classic bronzing mousse someone's asked does having so many followers impact on collabs with brands on youtube i'm kind of taking that question as like if you have more how does it impact the collaboration but i think it's no secret that obviously the more followers you have or the more engagement that you have on your platforms the more that you can potentially get out of a collaboration especially money wise so obviously having a little bit higher of a follower count is going to mean that you're going to get a few more brands contact you and you can get a better deal for yourself out of the work but one thing that i definitely would say is don't be afraid if you are starting out on youtube or social media at all don't be afraid to contact brands yourself i think for the longest time i had this kind of misconception of like i had to wait for stuff to come to me but it's definitely not the case i know some people have got really good work and really good connections out of actually reaching out themselves and it shows real confidence i think and it almost means that people are more inclined to get back to you because they appreciate that you've got out of your way to contact them and you feel proud of what you've built up and you so you should so yeah i do think that follow account definitely affects like who's going to work with you or who's going to be reaching out to you but don't rule off big brands just because you feel like you have a smaller following you'll be surprised at who they want to work with especially if your content is super good okay so that is all the questions that i'm going to answer for this video it was quite a random one like i feel like we've covered a lot of subjects here but at some points it got quite deep so if there are any topics that you guys want me to do like a whole video on like i say i do want to do one about mental health and anxiety and stuff because i think it's so important for me to bring those kind of topics of conversation to my platform because like i said before if it benefits one of you that's my job done as far as i'm aware but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this more kind of chilled chatty video i feel like these are the perfect videos to just stick on in the background and just listen to me drone on about absolutely nothing i am gonna wrap this video up here so i don't talk your ears off anymore but thank you guys so much for watching as always and i'll speak to you all very soon in my next one bye guys